Hey everybody, welcome to Ryan's Leather. Tonight, we're gonna make a vegetable tan leather belt. We're starting with some eight to nine ounce vegetable tan full grain leather. Uh, this is about eight to nine ounces with, um, with an inch and a quarter width. Uh, so we're gonna start with our uh, strap that we cut the other night, and I'm using a belt template that I got at Tandy Leather uh, just to get myself set up and started there and kind of gives me a guideline of my holes. And as I'm going here, I'm uh, developing and adapting my own style of belt, which you should do too. There's no reason to continue just using the templates you get. You can um, take them, adapt them, and modify them as you go. So I'm just going through here and getting all my holes marked um, using uh, measurements at 44 inch. No, I'm sorry. 42 inches here was the design length, but I did it as a seven hole belt. I added the holes, um, two extra holes to the length because I like to have a little bit of a longer belt. So now I'm just coming through with my X-Acto knife, trimming the edges, getting my uh, round end just the way I want it there. And you can use a chisel point or a chisel to cut these. I just don't have one. So I use just a method. I come across with one angle and the other there to get my tips. And just come back through, clean it up, get it, make sure it's the shape you like. If you don't like it, you can always come back and kind of recut it. I always like using that longest setting to give myself just a little bit of room there if I wanted to come back and just kind of fix that angle a little bit. So there we go. Came in and this will be something I'll like a little bit better with a little bit rounded tip to it. And then I get off camera. Now I'm going to use just a regular hardware store hole punch here to go and punch my holes throughout the belt. So one, two, three, four holes on the buckle end and seven holes on the uh, other end of the belt. So just going through and hole punching them. I'm going to have to come back with an X-Acto knife afterwards and just kind of pluck all these out. So just running through each one and we'll be done with this in just a moment. So um, I, after this, I went and bought some oval punches and it's making my belt mu banking much easier. And I'll show you guys that in the next video. So just going through with the X-Acto knife here and plucking out each of the little plugs. It can be kind of satisfying to watch those just get pulled out. So we'll get through those here in just a minute. All right, so finished uh, one end. Now we're going to come back and get the other. You can see I still have all the little leather holes that need to be punched out. So we're going to speed things up and make this go a little bit faster for you guys. All right, now for the notch where the buckle goes through, I had two holes punched on either end of the notch because I didn't have a chisel slot for this. I now do. Uh, I'll show you guys that in another video here. Um, so, and that has made making belts much easier. So there you go, kind of the finished uh, rough belt, full vegetable, full grain vegetable tan leather, um, ready to go. And now it's time, what I missed, you missed right here, my camera wasn't recording, but I put an edge groove all the way around the edge. Now I'm gonna come through with a beveler and just make sure I trim up and make all of the edges nice and round. It's gonna make it going through the belt keeper a lot easier and gives a nice cleaner looking belt. So this is really kind of satisfying to watch. So I'll just let you guys enjoy this here for a minute. All right, now we are gonna need to skive down the buckle end of the belt. So I'm using the Pro Skiver from Tandy here. So I always take the blades out of this each time I use it. So each time I use it, I have to go put the blades back in. So that's just kind of one of the things I like keeping the blades safe from getting messed up. And I keep them in a little plastic container to make life nice and easy. So that is one challenge with it you, uh, is going through and uh, changing those blades out every time but it makes for a nice clean cut. And then sometimes I'll use a safety skiver to finish it off, so. All right, so now I'm just starting at about the last rivet hole and going through and just thinning it down, trying to go in about half so that way when it folds over, it's not changing the width of the buckle very much in the whole belt. I'm just going to come back and finish my edge beveling here, make sure it's good and clean. And then I like doing just this little bit here where all kind of the hair, it's got a little bit hairy. 
and using that safety skiver just to finish it down where it was a little bit thicker still. So I, I get a little bit better control when it's getting thin with the safety skiver. Um, and once again, just kind of beveling off, cleaning off that little bit of furriness there, and then going down the entire length of the belt here to clean up all of the edges on the bottom side. I like doing this because it makes it just feel more finished and a nice cleaner belt. Um, so up and down both sides and uh, just getting that nice clean. I'm using a number two uh, edge beveler here right now. So um, gets a little bit of a bigger bevel and a nice clean look. That butt's kind of right up to that edge that I had cut grooved into it earlier that unfortunately you didn't get to see. Now it's going to be time to stain this. I'm using EcoFlow water stain. That's a water-based stain and this is going to be a black belt. So we are going to be staining this belt black and um, I like using the water base because it doesn't stink. It doesn't smell. It's not using chemicals. And since, as you can see, I'm doing this in my home, um, it keeps everything. It's really easy to clean up since it's water-based. And uh, if you get it on things, you don't really have to worry about it too much, especially using the kitchen countertops here. So just going to go put a nice coat of black over the entire belt, get it nice and kind of saturated, and then go back and wipe up each of the little drips and smears um, just to get it a good, solid finish. This takes a little while for me. I'm just kind of learning the process here, and I like going back and getting all my edges, make sure everything's going to be nice and cleaned up, and then come back and get all of the little holes and um, making sure that there's no more of the original tan leather showing is the goal here when I'm doing my staining. Um, needed a little bit more stain here just to get that good coat. Um, the backside is going to soak in a little bit more uh, of the ink than the front did obviously because it's not the finished side so we just kind of run down here and get it all nice and inked covered in the stain and then we're going to let it dry and while it, we let it dry um you know you can kind of see how it's drying here it's gonna just take a little bit it gets a little bit of a nice shine as it goes through while we're waiting let's make the belt loop so get your leather together. Start with two straps that are the same size as the belt. So I have two inch and a quarter straps. And what I'm also going to do is now cut a three quarter inch strap. That's how wide my belt loop is going to be for this belt. Um, so get your strap cutter, set it to your three quarters of an inch and take one of your strips here and just pass it through to get yourself a nice three quarter inch belt loop. And I don't know about you guys, but using a strap cutter is just really satisfying. So lay that out over your two pieces of belt loop that are the same width. You want to use two pieces to kind of measure however you're going to do it. On this belt, I'm going to use two rivets to rivet the belt together. Um, I actually have found that I actually prefer sewing them together now. So that's, that's going to be a bit of a change in my process when you see it in a future video about belt making. Now here's that edge groover. You didn't get to see it earlier, but just puts a nice line, um, down the edge. And then I come back and I'm going to bevel each edge of this belt loop as well. Once I am done with this, we are going to skive it down so that the center stays thicker and the edges where I'm going to be riveting it together are thinner. So that way it reduces the bulk of the belt. Now, this is the pro skiver here again, and it just takes a nice, good, clean level um, cut off that leather and makes it nice and thin. Um, it's really fun to use. If you haven't ever used one, it's really kind of satisfying. So then I'm just going to come in and clean it up a little bit with an X-Acto blade, get the other side, make sure that it's all going to work out and be even. Now, if this is starting to get too thin and you're nervous about using this skiver, you can always change over to a safety, uh, safety skiver. Or if you have um, other leather splitting equipment, obviously use that. But use the best tool you have for the job you're trying to do. So... If you don't have anything better, work with just a plain old knife There's or sandpaper. Work with what you got. So there we go. Got it kind of thinned down, thick in the middle, and just kind of sizing it there and going to mark it and get it ready to be able to be stained and riveted. So just going through with the awl and putting a mark on both sides. Um, and then I'm going to punch it to get it ready for the rivets here later. So I didn't like that. I used the wrong size hole there. It'll still work, but changing it to the smaller one here. So that was a mistake I made. 
it's okay. This belt's for me. This isn't for a customer. So um, just kind of doing a demonstration here. So getting that ink stain out a little bit more. And uh, now I'm going to stain the belt loop keeper and get it the same nice black deep color that I have um, for the rest of the belt so that it's going to be nice and match. Now with the belt, I'm just kind of giving it a little buff with a paper towel going over the whole surface, uh, taking up any residual ink stains and giving it a nice little bit of a buff and shine. It uh, gives a really nice effect to the belt here and gives it kind of a, for a satin finish, it gives it a pretty nice little shine to it. Um, and it's not too strong. So here's a little slow motion action there. And next we're gonna use some edge paint and just come through and put down a nice coat of edge on that um, Sorry, that wasn't the edge coat. That was the uh, just regular stain. And I'm going to use a slicker and just go through the entire edge of the belt. And this is going to um, basically seal in the edge of that belt that's exposed to make sure that it's um, when it gets run through your belt loops, it's not going to um, open up and let moisture get in there and uh, start to fray. So this just puts a nice, clean, slick edge on it. Um, not using anything real special here, just um, going through the belt with the uh, stain that's on there. The moisture in it is good enough to kind of really give it a good slick. And uh, next, you just kind of be a little careful when you're going over your tips. Um, if you mangle them a little bit, it can happen if you're just not being careful. All right, now I'm going to run through with a quick little bit of edge coat here. This is going to make sure it's all sealed in and good and protected and um, give a nice, good, clean finish to the edge of the all the leather pieces. Um, after I put the edge coat on, I do like to come through with just a little bit of a slicking again to make sure it's going to be nice and polished and remove any little bumps that it puts on there. This kind of is like an enamel almost. It, I, enamel is not the right word for it, but it um, gives it kind of a little bit of a harder shell. And uh, so I just go through, slick it all down and get it ready to go, making sure that I have all the ends. Now I just go through each of the uh, belt loop holes and make sure that those are going to be good to go. Because the worst thing that can happen on a new belt, you put it in there. If you didn't have these edges worn down uh, well, you can have it um, start to egg out your holes. And I like kind of just putting a little bit of an oval size to it here with the slicker, but uh, with a new oval punch, it's even easier. Um, just going through, making sure all the edges are going to look good and that there's not going to be any issues sliding anything through them. All right, giving the belt a quick little quality check. It's looking pretty good. Looks like it's about ready to put uh, the buckle and rivets on here and finish this thing up. Um, the last thing we're going to do afterwards, um, before we go to finishing though, is I'm um, just taking the slicker, going through and buffing, and then we are going to have to put our, uh, satin clear coat on here. So we started with just the, uh, stain and the last thing will be, um, a nice clean coat over the whole thing. So, all right, getting the clear coat ready, just giving a little shake there. Uh, putting it into a cup and going to grab a foam brush and just apply a nice thin layer of this clear satin finish over the whole belt. It's going to make it look really nice when it's done. Um, so go through here. You can see as it's drying, we're going to give it a little bit of time to dry and get the belt loop done as well. So that is almost all done and everything is starting to come together really well. Um, so if you guys are still watching here, if you haven't yet, make sure you comment, uh, tell me what projects you're making for your belts and also tell me, um, what sort of videos you'd like to see and make sure you like, uh, and if you haven't yet subscribe. So here we go. Going back to our belt loop, going to put on our rivets. Uh, I use two rivets. And then just fitting our belt loop here, folding it over, make sure it's going to fit the way we want it and just kind of pinching it down. And next we're going to come in with some glue and I'm going to glue it, those two ends back together just to make sure it's going to fit. So I just like kind of taking that safety skiver, roughing it up a little bit um, with all that finish that we put on there and coming back with the glue. And once the glue's on there, let it sit for a few minutes. Then I came in with a, a foam brush and spread it around to make sure it was going to be good and tacky. And we just slide the belt in, fold it over, kind of give it a little pinch down to start holding together. Make sure the belt is going to uh, move freely. Uh, put our rivets in. 
and start setting them. So there we go. We got our first rivet and just give it a little tap and bring it down. Next, we need to put in our belt loop. So bring the belt loop in tucked under the flap uh, with the rivets. Um, and in the future, it'll just be uh, sewed shut there. Uh, put the rivet back in on top. Give it a good whack down. And there we go. We have our finished belt. Thank you guys for watching all the way through. If you're all the way here, I really do appreciate it. Once again, give this video a like, watch another one, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.